you have to talk. You have to talk like God talks, think like he thinks, and talk like he talks. In, in Matthew's gospel, chapter 6, in verse 31, it says, Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewith, wherewith all shall we be clothed? This is the King James Version. Jesus is talking to his disciples about worrying. And again, he says, Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewith all shall we be clothed? Don't give voice to the thoughts on the inside of you if they're thoughts of doubt and fear and unbelief. Don't, don't, every thought that, that pops into your head is not, does not necessarily originate with the Lord. Every thought that pops into your head does not necessarily originate with the Lord. Some of the thoughts that we have, they, we need to allow them to, to be stillborn, if you will, to, to uh, uh, die a quiet death. Because the moment you begin to talk some thoughts or the, uh, begin to talk thoughts, you give life to those and, and y- you, you set them free uh, because words are containers. Amen? Amen. Um, I, I remember a person who, this is several years ago, and if you asked them where they were going, the typical response that they would give is, I'm going crazy, do you want to go? Yeah. Well, that's very funny. It's a very, very funny statement. And, uh, but the problem with that was or came to be that they started having mental problems. And it took them, and this is a true story, it took them a number of years to find their freedom and to get back to the place that they were. They were tormented in their mind. And, and this is after having a period of probably, I don't know, five or six years of making the statement over and over again, I'm going crazy. Do you want to go? And as innocent and as funny as that sounds, it turned out to be a a, a very harming and a very alarming statement and a very alarming confession that they had spoken over themselves. And they had to seek the Lord to find the freedom that he had. Can I get a witness? Yeah. Amen. And, and so we have to be careful about the words that come out of our mouths. We, we want to speak life over ourselves, over our families, over this church, this ministry. We want to speak life over uh, Beacon Christian Academy. We're, we're hiring now. And see, there's a, there's a temptation. Uh, we, we still need, how many teachers do we need for a summer program? We still need three, for summer, three teachers for summer program that starts the first week of June. We need, uh, how many teachers do we need for fall? Three or four? Yeah, we, need, we still need three or four. We need uh, preschool teachers and elementary teachers for fall. And, and, and see, this is the thing. There's a temptation to say, to, to speak circumstances, uh, to talk about things as you see them, because th- is anybody looking for help? Okay, and, and, well, that's a, I mean, I mean, everybody in the Outer Banks is looking to hire people, right? So the temptation is to talk the circumstances and to say, uh, there's no help to be found. There's no qualified teachers. This is the temptation. These are the thoughts that come. But I'm telling you, the Bible says that we're to speak life, that the power of death and life is in the tongue. Amen. So when it comes to when it comes to uh, uh, praying and this is because this all harkens back to th- this is a this is a, a, a sermon that we were that we I say a sermon. It's a teaching that we were looking at over a period of weeks on a Wednesday night or Wednesday nights. And, and, and you have to understand that God in 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 his infinite wisdom, he declares the end from the beginning and things uh, from ancient times that are not yet done, saying my counsel shall stand. Amen. He, he declares the, uh, uh, eternity from uh, eternity future from eternity past. He's declaring things. Uh, uh, Numbers 23, 19. Hath God said and shall he not do it? Uh, God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. Hath God said and shall he not do it? He's declaring that, uh, last week, Genesis chapter 1, in the beginning. Amen. Yeah. God said, light be, and the universe began expanding at 186,000 miles a second. Amen? Amen. He, by, uh, in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3, by faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. He created us in his image, and it's in, in his image that we speak and declare and shape the lives uh, um, that are for us. Uh, Matthew's gospel, chapter 12. Matthew's gospel, chapter 12. Now I think it's hot in here. Matthew chapter 12. 
I'm going to start with verse 33, Matthew 12, verse 33. It says, either make the tree good and its fruit good, or else make the tree bad and its fruit bad, for a tree is known by its fruit. Brood of vipers, how can you, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. A good man, out of the good treasure of his heart, brings forth good things. And an evil man, out of the evil treasure of his heart, or evil treasure brings forth evil things. But I say to you that for every idle word that men, men may speak, they will give an account of it in the day of judgment. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. By your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. He said we're going to give an account for every idle word that we speak in the day of judgment. But see, every word that we speak, this, this is why... Uh, 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 some of us need to learn the vocab vocabulary of silence because it's the small talk that trips us up. It's the little foxes that uh, spoil the vine, so to speak. But it's when we get caught up in small talk and making jokes and, and speaking, again, speaking circumstances, speaking things that we see right in front of us. Uh, all we're doing is reinforcing the life that we're living. Amen. But he said we're going to give an account for every idle word that we speak. But see, he, he also says just prior to that, he said, let me read it again. He said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks that a good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things and an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth evil things. That's why in verse 33 he said, Either make the tree good and its fruit good, or else make the tree bad and its fruit bad, for a tree is known by its fruit. So the, the, the things that are coming out of our heart, and I've made, I've made comments about this. matter of fact, I think a week or two ago I was telling you a story about a man that I worked with, and, and I walked up behind him and he was having a conversation with someone, and uh, he, was, he was letting them fly. It was... Uh, well, I'm not even going to give the letters. <laughs> Just lots of four-letter words, and he was letting them fly, and he turned around, and he saw me, and then his face kind of went pale, and, and he said, I'm, I'm sorry. And I said, that, that's okay. I just know what's in you in abundance. You know, because the, and he asked me what I meant by that, and I told him. I said, by the words that are coming out of your mouth, I can tell what you watch on television. I can tell what you listen to. I can even tell the kind of people that you hang around because, you know, be not deceived, bad manners. Uh, uh, bad company corrupts good manners. But, but the point that I'm trying to make is when we're uh, um, watching these things, it is, it is making an investment on the inside of us. That's why the Word tells us that we're to, to meditate on the Word of God. But when whatever is in us in abundance is what's going to come out of our mouths. It's, it's, it's the things that are shaping uh, um, the inward man are going to come out and, and shape the outward man. Let me, let me, let me, let me paint a little bit different, a different picture from a different perspective. So in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, it says, Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. In order to prove the good and acceptable and perfect will of God, you have to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You have to learn how it is <clears throat> that God does things. You have to learn Him and His character in His nature. <clears throat> Wednesday night I was talking about uh, um, um, that we know, uh, we see his acts and that shows us his ways and then ultimately that conveys to us his nature because ultimately he wants us to know his nature. I was also talking about how, how when we first come into the kingdom of God that we, he, it seems like he, uh, our, our prayer life is on, on um, um, turbo drive because when we ask him for something before we can form the words in our mouth, he's already dispatched the answer to our prayer and it seems like everything is escalated. And, and the reason is because when we first come into the kingdom, he wants us, he's trying to convey to us his heart. He's trying to, for, to get us to understand who he is and as a result of his acts that he's doing for us in answering prayer, uh, that we learn his ways and then ultimately we'll know his nature, right? And so he's, he's, he's speeding things up for us. We get a crash course when we come into the kingdom of God. But then, then it seems like things kind of slow down a little bit. And, and, and you know, you're wondering why, why things aren't playing out as fast as they once did. And, and because now it takes three days to get my prayer answered. And, 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 and it wasn't like it was back then where you said, Lord, if I'm, I think, uh, t uh, Wednesday night I said, uh, Lord, am I supposed to go to Taco Bell? And somebody comes trotting through uh, holding up a sign saying, you're supposed to go to Taco Bell, right? 
Um, but, but my point is, is that, is that things are expedited, but the reason that they're expedited is because he's wanting us to get a hold of his nature his character, to know who he is as a person. And, and, and how we do that, though, ultimately, is by investing ourselves in his word. Because, because if you're not being transformed into the image of the Son of God, you're being conformed to this world, right? If, you, if you're not making an effort for transformation, then by default you will be, be conformed. So, so when we're, uh, let, me, let me back up just a little bit and, and, and put this out there too. So when you're born, uh, you, you begin to learn uh, uh, the course and fashion of this natural world, right? Everything that you see, hear, taste, smell, and touch is going into your sensory mechanism and it, it's shaping the world around you. But the word tells us that, that he, said, he said that we're in the world, but we're not of the world, right? So when you're born again, you become a new creation, uh, uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Behold, old things are passed away and all things are become new. So you're a new creation, a new creature in Christ Jesus, but ultimately you have to learn how to live according to his ways of doing things, right? And, and so, and, and hang with me. So as we're learning his way of doing things, we're renewing the mind, learning what it is that he loves and what it is that he hates. We, and, and, and as a result, we're buying into the kingdom of heaven, learning that we live from a different kingdom, one that has limitless supply. But, but ultimately, ultimately, as we learn his way of doing things, as we're making an investment in the word of God and his way of doing things, we're, we're renewing the mind. And as a result of renewing the mind, different things or different kinds conversations are going to come out of our mouth. That's, that's why he says again in Isaiah, let me, let me read this to you. Is everybody all right? He says, my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord, for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts, for as the rain comes down and snow from heaven, and do not return there, but water the earth and make it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing which I, uh, uh, which I sent it. It won't return to him void. Whether, whether he's speaking it or whether you're speaking it, it's not going to return to him void. So, so uh, let's back up a little bit and, and put some things together. As, as we're declaring the word of God, we're shaping our future. As we're declaring the word of the world, we're still shaping our future. And, and see, if you, if you think this doesn't matter or, or you think there's no connection, that's exactly what the adversary wants you to think, that it doesn't matter how you talk. He, that's exactly what he wants you to think. There's a, there's a, a gentleman by the name of uh, uh, Yuval Noah Harari. Anybody ever heard of him? If, if, you have, if you've heard of him, just raise your hand. Yeah. So, so and, and you, you can do a Google search. Don't do it right now. Do it after church. Do a Google search on Yuval Noah Harari, and, and you will find out that he is an evil man. But he has the ear of... President Biden. He had the ear of President Obama. He had the ear of Angela Merkel. He has the ear of the World Economic Forum. Uh, he has the ear of, of many heads of state around the world. And, and, and the reason I bring up Yuval Noah Harari is because he, he's a Jewish man. Matter of fact, he's a, Hebrew, uh, uh, a history professor. He, he actually went to the, the, uh, Jerusalem University. But at the same time, he's a fan of, anybody know who Joseph uh, Goebbels is? Uh, he, he, was the, he was the Nazi propaganda minister. Uh, and, and Goebbels is the guy that said, he said, if you repeat a lie often enough that people will believe it. And then, then he went on to say, so make your lie big. The bigger you make it and the more you repeat it, the more they're going to buy into it and believe it. It's a true, true statement. So you have a, a Jewish man who's a fan. Not only is he a fan of, of, of Goebbels, but he's a, a fan of... Uh, um, um, let me think, I'll think of his name in a minute. He's, he's the... Uh, Karl Marx, another Jewish man who uh, uh, was the, the father of communism. Now, the reason I bring these men up is because, because uh, um, um, uh, Harari is, uh, you, this is probably, this is prob well, anyway, in, anybody ever heard of hacking humans, the term hacking humans? And it's an expression that, that I don't know, if, I'm not sure if he coined the phrase. I'm going somewhere with this, so hang with me. So he, he coined the phrase hacking humans. He wrote a book called uh, Sapiens and is talking about the history of man. So, so uh, let, let's put it like this. 
he's, he's, he has not only bought into, but he, he uh, propagates and promulgates uh, um, the, the, uh, the mechanism of propaganda and convincing humanity uh, of how they're to think and what it is that they're to think and to say, right? So, so let, me, let me put it to you like this. He said, this is Yuval Noah Harari, and this is almost a direct quote, that, that uh, um, fake news has been around for thousands of years. Just look at the Bible. No, no, no. He said fake news has been around for thousands of years. Just look at the Bible. He, and, and what he's saying is that this is fake news. He, he also said that history began when man created gods for themselves and history will end when men become gods. Now, now this is a man who has the ear of many heads of state. He has his, I'm telling you, let, let, me, let me read this to you. This is... This is, it's, you've all know Harari gave keynote speeches on the future of humanity in Davos 2020 and 2018 and the World Economic Forum's main Congress, uh, uh, on the, uh, the World uh, Economic Forum's main Congress uh, hall stage. He regularly discusses global issues with heads of state and has had public conversations with Austrian Chancellor uh, Sebastian Kurtz, Dutch Prime Minister uh, Mark uh, Root, uh, Greek Prime Minister Kyriakos, Mitsotakis. Harari has also met with French President Emmanuel Macron, German Chancellor Angela Merkel, uh, Argentine President uh, Mauricio Macri, uh, German President Frank Walter Steinmeier, Shanghai's Mayor Ying Yang. Uh, Harari sat down in 2019, sat down for a filmed discussion on technology and the future of society with Facebook's Mark Zuckerberg. And in 2018, he presented the first ever TED Talk uh, delivered by a digital avatar. That's from his website. That's a cut and paste from his website. And the reason I'm telling you this is because the world knows that what they're telling you, that what's being put out is having an impact and it's shaping the mindset of humanity. The world knows this. The adversary knows this very well, what I'm telling you this morning. He knows that, that if they can get your thoughts, and, and see, I mentioned uh, hacking humans, and I said that generally speaking, generally speaking, that means knowing people better than they know themselves. I have been praying for probably uh, uh, 30 years, I have been praying, Lord, let me know you better than I know myself because, because I'm changing and he's never changing. But what it is that they want to do is know people better than they know themselves. They use algorithms to do this. Now, the reason I'm telling you all this is because there is a, an, an effort to gain control of your thought life. This, this is what the world, the adversary, is seeking to do because they want to reshape the world that we live in. So when I stand here this morning and I tell you that you have to be not conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God, it's, it's, the reason is it's because it's his way of doing things. And as we change the way we think and conform to his way of doing things and, and we start talking differently, some of, us, some of us have glimpses of what's taking place in society. Some of us have, have small pictures. We know a little bit of what's going on over here. We know the atrocities that are being co uh, committed over here. We know that, that uh, uh, this is being perpetrated on the United States here. We have these little bits and pieces, but he alone knows the whole package and he alone knows the future. Can, can I get an amen? So what, the reason I'm telling you this is because there is a concerted effort on the part of wicked men around the world to control your thought process. But, but at the same time, we have a promise from the Word of God that we, if we will invest in His way of doing things, then, then ultimately he has, he has our... Because the Bible tells us that we have the mind of Christ, right? Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. We have the mind of Christ. We have the thoughts, feelings, and purposes of His heart. So that, that's if, if you've given Him your life and you've committed yourself to renewing the mind because there are three kinds of people that are in this world, right? There's the natural man, that's the carnal man, uh, the natural man, the carnal man, and then, and then the... Let me, let, me, let me give you these real quick. There, there's three kinds of people. I like... Uh, what's his name? Sermon, the three chairs. Are, are y'all doing okay? So, so we have... We have, we have the natural man, the spiritual man, and then the carnal man. That's the three kinds of people. The natural man is the man who, who he's, he's 
un unregenerate man. He's the person who's not yet come into the kingdom of God, but we're believing God that he will. Then there's the spiritual man, which is the man who's come into the kingdom of God and his mind has been renewed with the word of God. He's walking in faith and in power. And then there's the carnal man who's come into the kingdom of God and he's yet to renew his mind. He's, he's, he's still living like the world, even though he's accepted Christ and he's a new creature in Christ Jesus. He's still yet to renew his mind. And as a result, he's getting the same thing that the world is getting. And ma matter of fact, if you're, not, if you're not wise to what it is that the adversary is doing, you will coast through life oblivious to what's taking place. And not only oblivious, but you're, you're, you're committing to it or you're lending your agreement to what it is that's taking place in the world because you're oblivious to what it is that's taking place. And the reason I'm telling you this is because, because he has called each and every one of us to affect his purpose in the earth, right? I've said this many times before, that he doesn't create something and then try and figure out after the fact what it is that he's going to do with it. He has a purpose in mind before he ever created or formed you in the womb. He had a purpose in mind for you. As a result of his desire for you, the closer you walk with him, the more the purpose will be realized. The farther you walk from him, the less the purpose will be realized and the more the purpose of the world will be realized. The, the, the flightiness, the, all the craziness, the nonsense, because the farther you get from him, the giver of life, the author of life, in him is life and that life is the light of men. The closer you get to him, the brighter his light will shine in and through you. The more you will realize his plans and purposes in your life and the more, and the more effective you'll be able to carry them out. But the farther you walk from him, see that there's, there's a war going on for this right here, what's between your ears. There's a war going on because the enemy knows if he can just, if he can just make you uh, um, um, complacent, if he can just keep you from buying into what it is that the Lord has for you and renewing your mind, if he can make you ineffective, he's, because, because after all, how many people spend how many nights of the week sitting there staring at a screen of one kind or another, Right? And, and, and did you know that when you're watching television, you're as close to a state of co uh, uh, a comatose state as you as you can get? You, uh, that's the truth. You are as close to uh, being in a state of uh, uh, well, you're as close to being comatose as you can possibly get when you're sit. Your your brain is mush when you're sitting there staring at a television screen, right? So so how many people? My question is, don't raise your hand. <clears throat> How many people sit night after night and stare at a screen while your mind is mush and allowing them, it's called programming for a reason, allowing them to tell you what it is that you're supposed to think, how it is that you're supposed to dress, what it is that you're supposed to like, how it is what you're supposed to eat, right? How many, how many of us do this night after night after night? And, 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 and now think about this. And, and, and then we give, we give let, let's be, let's be, uh, let's have a conservative estimate, uh, 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 I will say conserve. Um, I don't know. Let's say an hour. I'll, I'll be nice. Let's say two hours. I'll be extra nice. Let's we'll say two hours that we give two hours a day to watching things and, and, re, and listening to things and doing these kinds of things. And, and then how much do we give to this? I'm trying to be nice, right? I'm trying to be nice. So, so if we give I'll say two hours, but I think, I think the, the national average, I, I mean, it's something. It's staggering. It's like seven hours a day. Did you all know that? I think it's seven hours a day that people are staring at screens and watching stuff, right? And if you're staring at, uh, I don't know, R.W. Schambach or Billy Graham or somebody like that, then, then by all means, keep staring. But what I'm telling you is, is we invest the, the better part of our lives buying into what it is that the world is selling, right? And then, and then by default, because, because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth is going to speak, right? So we, we can try and we can try real hard. We can tr do our very best to line ourselves up with, with what it is that the word says, right? We come in here on Sunday morning. We say, yes, brother, sister, uh, praise the Lord and hallelujah and and he's my rock and my fortress. And then we walk outside there and we turn on the radio. We get home, we turn on the television, we start watching. And again, I'll be nice. Uh, we start watching Murder, She Wrote or what, what, I, I, I mean, I, I, I'll let y'all insert, insert uh, uh, name or title there because, again, I'm, I'm being nice. I am. But, but we, we go home and we start watching these things. And, and as a result, we are, we are surrendering our hearts and our minds to what it is that the world is selling. 
And we think that there's absolutely no consequences. And we'll, we'll, we'll say stuff like, like you, know, you, you know, somebody cuts you off on the bypass. And then, and then we say something comes out of our mouth and you think, you, know, you look around, see if anybody's watching. Because after all, I didn't know that was still in there, right? Well, it's still in there and it's being replenished on a regular basis because of what it is that you're buying into on a regular basis, right? And, and see, what we're talking about this morning is that your words are shaping your future. You're eating the fruit of the words of your mouth. Well, how do the words of your mouth originate? Where do they originate from? Let me put it that way. Where, where, what you put in. Thank you. So the words that you're speaking out of your mouth, they're originating with what's going into your heart, right? Right? That's why the Bible tells us uh, uh, to guard your heart with all diligence, right? That's what my Bible says anyway. Yours might say something different. But it says guard your heart with all diligence for out of it flow the issues of, help me out, life. Out of it flow the issues of life. And we give no credence to what it is that we watch or what it is we listen to, who it is that we hang around. We give no credence to this whatsoever. And then we wonder why life is the way it is, right? Am I being nice? Am I, have I crossed the line? Is the line back there somewhere? Let me get, let me get back behind the line. We, we wonder why things are going the way they're going, and, and we never stop to listen to what it is that we're saying and how much what we're saying lines up with the lives that we're living. We, we never stop to consider, is this really, is that preacher telling the truth? Is what I'm talking about, is it really having an Im impact or an influence on my life? And I'm telling you, of a certainty, yes, it is. Yes, it is. And it's not because I said so, although I'm going to keep saying it. it's not because I said so. It's because he said so. He said, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat the fruit thereof. Jesus said, and this is, this is it's written in red right here. He said that out of the abundance of the heart... The mouth speaks. Let me get there. There it is. Nope. The pages are stuck together. All right. So, so right there. Nope. They're still. There we go. There it is. If, if, if you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children. No. Am I, am I not where I'm supposed to be here? Oh, okay. Never mind. I'm not where I'm supposed to be here. Here we go. There we go. Uh, how, how can you, being evil, speak good things? Let's stop right there. How, how can you, being evil, speak good things, right? Uh, um, uh, for out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth evil things. I, I, I mean, what is it that determines? Now, and, and don't get me wrong. I, I know full well that when you come into the kingdom of God, you're born again. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a, you don't, and you don't jump back and forth. I'm not a. I'm not an eternal securist. I'm not a once saved, always saved, or a predestination guy. That's not, that's not, but at the same time, uh, I think that you have to, uh, 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 God is doing everything he can to hold on to you. How about that? And, and, and you have to make the decision for him to turn loose of you. You have to turn your back on him in essence. But what I am telling you is that, that you can invest in evil and evil is going to come out of your mouth. You, you, can do, you can be a Christian and you can be doing things and listening to things and watching things that you're not supposed to be doing. Okay. I, well, anyway, I'm going to be nice there too. You, you, you can do that. And, and as a result, that's that carnal man that we were reading about in 1 Corinthians, right? That's the carnal man. Let me, let me, let me go back there one more time and then we'll start to wrap things up. That's that, that's that carnal man that I... That, so look here, let me, let me just read this to you. This is verse 14 of 1 Corinthians chapter 2. It says, But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. This is the natural man. This is the person who's not born again. 
They're, they're spiritually discerned. But he who is spiritual, this is the person who's born again. He's bought into the kingdom of God. He's renewing his mind. But he that is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. This is the person who has renewed himself with the word of God. You have the mind of Christ. And brethren... And I, brethren, could not speak to you as to spiritual people, but as to carnal, as to babes in Christ. So he's telling them, this is the church that is in Corinth, right? This isn't the, the, all the people that he's trying to get born again that live in the city of Corinth. This is the, let me, let me show you here. This is 1 Corinthians uh, um, uh, chapter 1, verse 2, to the church of God which is at Corinth, to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, and all who are in every place... Call on the name of the Lord Jesus, uh, Lord, uh, name of Jesus Christ our Lord, both theirs and ours. So not only is it to the church in Corinth called to be saints, but to everybody else who's reading this is what he's saying. And he's saying, he's, he's telling them here in, in chapter two, uh, beginning of chapter 3, verse 1, it says, And I, brethren, could not speak to you as to spiritual people, but as to carnal, as to babes in Christ. That means they've come into the kingdom of God, and they have yet to renew their mind. They're babies in Christ, right? Because when a baby is born, it doesn't know everything. <laughs> Little sinner there, she can't take care of herself quite yet, but her mama's doing a pretty good job, right? But, but see, she can do a lot because she's grown. She's, when will she be three? Two, August 24th. So she'll be two on August 24th. Now, she's learned a lot in her almost two years, but I can assure you she does not yet know how to take care of herself. But as she grows and matures and as she uh, uh, hears the word of God and she's taught the word of God, she will grow into a mature believer in Christ Jesus too, right? But, but when we're infants, when we're babes in Christ, we don't know how it is to conduct ourselves unless... We buy into the kingdom and we invest ourselves in the word of God. We renew our mind, not being conformed to this world, but renewing our mind, right? Unless we renew our mind with the word of God. So, so our, our hearts cry, our prayer should be, Father, let me think like you think. And, and, and let me talk like you talk, speaking words of life, right? That, that should be our heart's cry. That we know him better than we know ourselves. Because, because he is truth, right? He, he, he's truth. He, he doesn't, it's not, it's not, anyway, I'm not even, even going to get into subjective and objective truth. It, it, the thing is, he alone holds the future. He is the one who declares and says what truth is. It's like the song we, we sang before. When he speaks something, all of creation gets in line with whatever it was that he's spoken, right? And he's spoken a great deal right here. And it's us, up to us to invest in that to find out what it is that he's spoken so that we can speak the same thing that he speaks. A amen. Amen. Let let's stand. Can I get someone to come and play the keyboard for me? W what I want us to understand is that if we don't make a firm commitment to him and his way of doing things, we're going to keep repeating the same thing over and over again, right? It's like, it's like Einstein said. He said, insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. A amen. Amen. And, and, and unless we commit ourselves to knowing him and, and investing ourselves in him, don't expect to have or do or be anything any different because after all, we're, we're just following the course and fashion of the world. A a amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we come to you in Jesus name and we thank you. We thank you, Father, for the word that you've given us, given us and for the transforming power of that word, that it will take root in our hearts, that it will grow to maturity, and that that word will bear fruit that remains. Father, we thank you for the fruit of the word of God being evidenced in our lives, that we're eating the fruit of your word that we speak, Father. And Lord, we ask you, Father, we ask you for a crop failure. We ask you, Father, to forgive us for ill words and idle words. We ask you, Father, to forgive us for speaking doubt and fear and unbelief. We ask you, Father, to let your word come alive on the inside of us. And that that word, Lord, would, would, would be what's coming out of our mouths. And that word is what's reproducing. Father, I thank you for it. I thank you for the seed of the word of God in the mouth of the believer. I thank you for it, Lord, that, that your life is evidenced in and through us. 
that we are fully mature believers, that we're spiritual people having the mind of Christ, and that your word, again, is coming out of our mouths. And Father, I ask you to help us to stand strong in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation. I ask you, Father, to give us wisdom in all our doing. Your wisdom, Lord. And Father, I thank you for it. 